Talking about estimating total capital cost, uh, first thing to notice is inflation. When, uh, if you look at the chemical engineering plan cost index, you can see how the prices of chemical engineering plan uh, capital costs are increasing over the years. And a couple of different techniques to factor in the uh, chemical engineering cost are, one is the Lang factor, which uh, the values are listed in table 7.7, .7, and three types of processing plants are addressed here. The fluid processing, solid fluid processing, and solid processing. And uh, the equation that's used as uh, total cost is found out by multiplying the Lang factor, which is represented in table 7.7, .7, with the number of individual units times the purchase cost. And then uh, the second technique is for module costing, and this is basically for a new chemical plant, whereas Lang factor was for adding a um, expansion to a pre-existing chemical engineering plan. And this e equation is very similar to the other one if you look at it. And it's also studied under two different types, the base conditions and the non-base. Base conditions are where the uh, common material is carbon steel, that's what's used to make this equipment. And the pressure is near ambient conditions. And uh, they actually calculated the the factors for a bunch of equipment and listed it in the Appendix A, and they found that out in 2001. And take this page from our textbook, it kind of shows the different factors associated with capital cost as far as direct with equipment, materials, labor, and then indirect with freight, overhead, engineering cost, and uh, also there's fees and stuff like that, and also uh, a total cost. And if you look at all those equations, I'd love to go over them with you, but it's given in the textbook. So uh, just listing them right there, you can see how uh, different values are used to calculate them. And if you look at the last two equations too, you can plug in what you need to get your individual costs specified for the plant. And, but if you have non-base conditions, which are not at ambient pressure conditions, or it's not carbon steel, then you look at these factors with the factors over one. And also, uh, two points we're going to go over pressure factors, and uh, Brian's going to talk about the second one. But as far as pressure factors, you can consider different things as design pressure, vessel diameter, maximum allowable stress, well deficiency, corrosion allowance. And then you sum it all together in that equation at the bottom. And uh, it kind of makes sense that if you increase the pressure inside the system, you have to increase the wall thickness and thus increase the cost. So next to talk about the uh, materials of construction, I'm going to let Brian Hepler.